come to Jamaica, the island of real bad man Some real dog at you throw some real gang bang No run for the fair, the knock your bitch back Step up! These are the moments oh. When everybody gun loaded We not instigate violence But we believe in the self-defense no matter what These are the moments When every gangsta gun loaded We not instigate violence But we believe in the self-defense Welcome to True Island Stories This is a two-part episode of the Jamaica vs. Ashiraka gangster series and today we delve into the valley of the Rengan the flesh oh see pum pum the badness this is uh, the Jakaira Barnes uh, from uh, Shiraka versus versus he she from West Kingston uh, epic Jamaica epic story from uh, West Kingston Jamaica in this first epic epic we're gonna speak about Shirak's Jakaira Barnes badness who was a, a demon delinquent it is said but please note, this story is allegations made up from information found on the net, which cannot be proven or disproven by this narrator. Chicago is a city known for its sports, from the era of the dominant Chicago Bulls team led by Michael Jordan and uh, Scottie Pippen, who won uh, six NBA titles in the 1990s, who are rated as the best and the greatest NBA team in history, to the successful uh, Chicago Bears team, football team that is, you know the rest. But today, Chicago is more renowned for something else. Something more diabolical. It's deadly gangs. From the gangster disciples who wreaked havoc in the 1990s in Chicago to the more recent GDs and the GDK clique, an acronym for gangster disciple killers. Many of whom have made their indelible mark on the columns of death and destruction in their cities. Fast forward today to one in particular, a perilous Punani pilgrimage named Shakira Barnes, OCKI, OC Taikon Assassin. And I will tell you more on how she came by that name, Taikon Assassin, later in this story. And how that new moniker lit the spark that fanned her diabolical flames into a roaring forest fire. Zakaira was a miniature female villain who ripped her pound of flesh from her ops, paralleling any nutsack hanger who predicated that venomous lifestyle. But what really turned Kaira into the gargoyle she became? It all started in the community of Chicago, Illinois. K.I., as she's affectionately referred to, attended high school. K.I. actually wanted to become a social worker when she grew up. But sadly, fate would intervene and she in turn grew up a school and turned into a different type of worker, a deaf dealer. Kaya lost her father even before she turned a year old and that played a huge psychological part in uh, turning Kaya into what she or who she eventually became. A 15 year old called O.D. Perry was pounced upon mercilessly and dirted in the mean streets of Chicago, Illinois in the community of Parkway Gardens. The assassin was said to be none other than the female assassin from the 63rd street set, Gakara Barnes. Odie's death led to his block becoming known as O Block. Odie was closely associated to Chief Keefe and the Chirac Grim Reaper himself, King Vaughn. Also, Little Dirk, Little Reese, Stay Savage, and more. Odie was born on May 13th, 1991. He was also an aspiring rapper who appeared in uh, several of Chief Keef's videos. Odie's death was a reprisal for Jakara's close friend, 17-year-old Shondella Tuka Gregory O.C. Tuka. Odie is said to be allegedly responsible for the death of Shondell Tuka Gregory, who was pounced upon in the dead of the night and he was pole fed multiple hot skeletons all over his frail structure. He battled for oxygen, which he found scarce in the moment the grim reaper was already hovering with his sharp and a scythe licking his chops mouth wateringly <coughs> had the delicious delicacy convulsing profusely on the tarmac below he gasped for oxygen <sighs> mansion was already furnished impatiently waiting his imminent arrival but 
King Vaughn and his cronies weren't about to let this slide so easily. Both Vaughn and Kai were from the impoverished community of Parkway Gardens in Chicago. Vaughn was a from a 64th Street and Kai was a from a 63rd. Kai and her allies upped their blickies and spun the block circling like starving vultures all the time on the hunt for dead flesh. And little did he too canoe. He got next. Comfortable spot, which was bought and paid for, right beside his nemesis, Odie, his assassin, Odie Perry. Kiai caught Tuka, guard off, and clum, 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 gave him a taste of his own medicine. The news of Odie's death sent Gakaira into a mental tailspin downwards, and all on her mind now was murder. She had to get her get back. 63rd eventually became known as O Block in loving memory of O.D. Perry and at 64th became known as Tukaville to this day. Those two knockings were instrumental in turning young potential killers into real diabolical serials. After allegedly slaying O.D., Kyra was left unsatisfied. A huge unfillable hole now stood where her heart was, it is said. Even so still, it was after her close bestie and cousin got dirted that made Kyra go fully dark mode to the point of no return into the dark in abyss. She pounced upon a GB member named J Money and diary at her chip glock in his face leaving him scampering for a tissued solution but the store shelves were empty, like in the middle of the Big C era. Kyra gave him ten pieces like KFC. Then, in her insatiable appetite for more red Kool-Aid, she caught another pilgrim, Blood Money, O.C., Big Low, Lacking. He was another member of the King Vaughn's 6-4 O-Block set. She let loose her hand cannon on him. Glum, 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 glum. In his head, upper torso, all over. Glum, 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 glum. She bullied. Butchered him. Glue had just signed a big record dealer via his cousin Chief Keith, but for whatever reason, Glue went back in the hood. He did the unfathomable, and the unfathomable did him. Now, his bones, his bone white skeletals, shall now forever remain in Chicago. All courtesy of the female assassin Gakaira Barnes. Oh, Kyra was on a roll. But don't you for one minute think King Vaughn's set weren't active, that they just sat idly by in uh, watching Kyra wave havoc and destruction on their set. Na 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 na. It was tit for tat and butter for fish in that situation. Two camps were tennising bodies left, right and centre. It was get back for get back on both sides. Besides, J Money, another member of King Vaughn's gang, was set up by a female, and like so many others before and after him, J Money fell victim to the law of the almighty rank in the flesh, the Pum Pum patronage. <laughs> J Money thought he was gonna slide in some slippery slope alley. Instead, he got slid on by his ops, the female devil K.I. He ran for his life. <laughs> but tried as he did, he couldn't outrun the Hussein the 45 slugs that came at him and cut him down to size, leaving him slumped in his own red liquid on the ground. As the maggots from hell converged on his lifeless cadaver in celebratory fashion, screaming, Pony over here! Pony over here! But the small axe had fallen yet another big, tall old tree. But time wasn't fair to Gakaira, it is said. And after so many dirtings on her resume, she began to feel invincible. The cops were onto Kyra like white on rice, all over her like a cheap suit. But they were all a day late and a peso short. Kei made the mistake of posting her locations at a party on her socials to the delight of her ops who were rumored to be King Vaughn and Big A and among others. King though had somewhat of a love-hate relationship with Kei. They would steady text each other of their desirable intimacies. But Kara wouldn't bite on Vaughn's suspect invitations. One, because for some reason she never felt herself pretty enough, beautiful enough. She probably had a very low self-esteem, perhaps. Hmm? 
on the day. It is alleged that King Vaughan and Big A and other accomplices pulled up on her logs and spotted her. And without hesitancy, they let loose their devilers on her. Clump, 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 As Kaya scampered like a triple crown winner for her life. But escape wasn't in the plans of the Shirek Reaper, who was determined to make her bounce. He chased her relentlessly. Him and Big A and clump, 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 clump,
Them time and tell them it is vengeance Blow the cycle continuing but No you see that but it's no revenge Looking at the mirror there is no different Man we full of hey. How we know we friends back from the boy who no do that Who? Uh. Who no can't tell we jaw who no who? Who from here so we don't know how around who? Uh. Yep. Now I'm on better Any man does not shut him off a back up and go Mind get on him head back and go Up off him strap on him friend him for do None of that now I'm on better No assumption, I saw the ground run Power, married to corruption Criminal, bred from limited options Ten generation, passing the set song One one head man will live along Name one, we himself a lot, we know Only him one, one and his politician Name one who and get a youth resilient Fuck from the boy who no do that Boy, he ain't kill with you on the back Boy, who from your soul don't know what wrong go Eh, yo, yo a man better boy Any hey, man does not shut him off a back up and go Bite it on him head back and go Pop off him strap on him friend him to do it Eh, yo, no 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 Eh, yo, you know the team going up set a seat up a beat Eh, yo, hey, man, take your time man Boy, boy man Come to them purple.